that again to be here in God's house. We are now opening up our hour uh, for our Bible study here at Fresh Start. Appreciate all those that have uh, logged in and able to watch uh, the live Bible study. Uh, This uh, Bible study that we will be starting in uh, will be in the book of the Revelation. And uh, we uh, appreciate all of the attentiveness and uh, all the prayers uh, that have been going out uh, this week of all the good members of the church and those that watch. We appreciate you. And uh, we just want to say what a blessing it is uh, in that to be in this book of the Revelation. Amen. Amen. Thank God for an opportunity uh, to read the Word of God uh, in uh, uh, liberty. Let me say it that way. And uh, have an opportunity to study the Word of God and have liberty to do that also. Amen. Uh, before we start, I want to say that um, for those that uh, have never uh, tuned into this Bible study, or maybe in the future, if someone gets it and don't understand, this Bible study uh, is a Bible study of uh, the book of the Revelation. It is uh, going to be a line upon line and precept upon precept. And this Bible study will not bring out 
uh, anything of the rapture. This is a non-rapture study. Uh, this is of the true word of God. Yes, so sir. therefore, uh, we will clear the air uh, on that. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Here we are in the book of the Revelation. I want to say here that the book of the Revelation and the book of Daniel were written for those who live in this final generation. Amen. They go hand in hand, okay? So uh, we will be referring a lot to the book of Daniel. And uh, Brother Mike brought out a wonderful message last night uh, in the book of Daniel. But I want to go over uh, in the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse number 10. And I want to read to you uh, one scripture that may help uh, to understand what we're trying to say. He said here in chapter 10 and verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 12 and verse number 10, many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. We understand that, amen? amen. We know that uh, that is pretty prevalent. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. Amen? amen. amen. So we see here that uh, the wicked will never understand the word of God, much less the book of the Revelation. But we come to the understanding that those that love God and his appearing, yes. they will come to the knowledge of the true word of God. Amen. 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 I believe that we are in a time right now of teaching the word of God. Amen. I believe that it is a time that God's word needs to go out and go into every home that is available. Amen. Amen. And that will welcome in God's word uh, and, and, and receive it uh, with joy Amen. and understanding. So that being said, let us pray. Precious Father, we come to you thanking you for another opportunity and that to be in your house. We ask, Father, for your blessings upon the reading of thy word. We ask, Lord, that you will open hearts and open minds tonight, Father, that, Lord, that the book of the Revelation, God, would be revealed to each and every one and that uh, preparation, Father, for the days to come. Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We will study this book line upon line and chapter upon chapter. Amen. And we see in this... Uh, this is why the wise shall understand, you see. As we go in and we break down God's word, you will see how that this will work itself out and it will prepare you for that day. Now, uh, if you tuned in early enough, you heard us singing that song, uh, uh, when we all get to heaven. Amen. Amen. And the further we get on into this Bible study, the more that song's going to mean to yes, you, sir. amen? amen. Uh, the more uh, revealed uh, that you'll come to that song. That song's going to mean a lot to you when we get finally down uh, to the end of the book, amen? All right, as we study this book, many of us living on earth now will see the events and the prophecy come to pass. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. I believe we are living in the latter days, and I believe that uh, time has very little uh, and left in that for prophecy to work itself through. I know that there's been things that have been fulfilled, but there is a whole lot more in that to be fulfilled in Amen. prophecy. And I do believe that this generation that we are living in will see. If you don't go by the grave, I truly believe that here in the near future, our Lord and Savior will come. Amen. Amen. I truly believe that. Amen. All right. This is Father's love letter to you, and he wants you to read it. Yes, sir. He wants you to understand. Amen. Amen. So coming to the knowledge of that, let's start in verse number one. In the book of the Revelation, chapter one and verse number one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now we come to the realization here that uh, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of John. Amen. Amen. This is Jesus Christ's revelation. Okay. And we see here in that same verse that uh, it's directed to the servants, you see. To the servants of God. Amen. And he said that which will shortly come to pass. If you believe that tonight, say amen. amen. I believe that this will come to pass. I believe that all of God's word, for the word of God says every jot and every tittle will come to pass in the prophecy. Okay. Amen. So we know that all these things will come to pass. 
And it says here that it, uh, it signified it by his angel unto his servant John to do what? To write it down. Okay? That's all John was to do, was to pin it down. Okay? So we see here that John is the scribe for this. Okay? So verse number two. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. In other words, this testimony means that he was a witness, you see. He was a witness to exactly what was going on and how it was presented to him. Verse number three. This is a very important verse. And I want you to uh, perk up your ears when you hear this. He said in verse number three, Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. That is a threefold blessing given to you in that one scripture right there. Mm -hmm. In verse number three, he said, blessed is he that readeth. Now, I know in the past that many have heard that, oh, I don't want to read the book of the Revelation. I'm scared of that thing. Yeah. I'm afraid of all this. Uh, that, friend, is nothing but just ignorance, okay? I'm going to bring it out just like that. If you don't have the understanding to know uh, that verse number three was written for you. Amen. Okay? He said, blessed is he that readeth. So there's your first blessing, okay? Second blessing, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. There's your second blessing. And the third, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So as we know, that third blessing right there is for those that uh, that uh, keep those things. And, and that's what he's asking you to do. And not just be a, a hearer of the word of God, but doers also. You understand? It is in very important in this book that we will be going through that you apply your wisdom and your knowledge to your life. It will be detrimental to your soul. It will be detrimental to what side you will be agreeing with, okay? As we've often said and always say, this uh, Bible study is not a rapture study, okay? So if you're looking for uh, a flyaway doctrine or uh, an any moment doctrine or a rapture doctrine, it's not in this book, amen? All right. All right. When we study this book, we come to understand the full knowledge of all the events coming to pass in these end times. It gives us security and peace of mind to know what will take place. When we read this word of God, we will have security in our heart. You will be sealed in your mind and have knowledge of what will go on in them latter days. Amen. And that's not very far off. Amen. We're not talking about uh, another hundred years from now, friends. Uh, if I read my Bible correctly, uh, we are right here at the end of this generation. Yes, sir. And so things are going to have to start coming to pass. And as we see these events begin to take place, you are going to recognize it because we're going to go over it here in the Word of God, in the book of the Revelation, and you are going to see the events take place. Mark thirteen twenty three, But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus Christ has foretold us all things. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. But in the, in the gospels, Jesus has prepared us, uh, in that to, uh, look ahead and see, uh, what will happen, uh, to those who do not read the word of God. Those who do not study out the book of the revelation and the book of Daniel and the prophecy of all that, you see. These are those that will uh, follow along with their churches and, and follow along with their rapture doctrine. So, But at either rate, let me go on. Verse number four. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits, which are before his throne. Now, we need to see here tonight 
that the seven churches of Asia are formed into a circle geographically. If you had a map and you looked about the seven churches in Asia, you would see that they do. They make a circle. And of all of these churches. Now, um, and the churches are symbolizing of all the churches around the globe today. Now, granted, they were all churches that were there in Asia at that time. But what we're doing here is showing that these are symbolic to the churches that are in the world today. In other words, what they believed and how they taught is exactly how the churches are doing today. Right. And my question to you tonight is, which of your churches line up with the Word of God? Which church are you in, okay? As we see here, they are symbolic of all the forms of churches and doctrines represented in the, church, in the Christian world today. Though these churches are in the Middle East, God is the God of the universe. He is the God of the universe. And therefore, all of this revelation will fall upon all of the world, okay? This revelation will come past to all of the world, not just uh, in America and not just into Asia, but of all of the world, okay? Amen. Everyone will be affected uh, by this, okay? Verse number five. Or excuse me, let me go back to four. He said, uh, for John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, uh, which was, and which is to come. Okay? Uh, uh, now what he's saying here, he's given himself in three different places, you understand. He said that which is, meaning right now, okay? Uh, which was, which was, was when? In the first earth age and which is to come, and that when his second advent comes, okay? We are pointing out about the second advent of Jesus Christ. We already been through one advent. Jesus Christ came as a child, amen? He came as a savior. Uh, he came as a uh, redeemer for mankind. But when he comes the next time, he will come with a rod of iron, okay? Mm -hmm. He will be king of kings and lord of lords. For the word of God tells me that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Therefore, that's why we know that this is global. This is not regional, but it will be global for the whole world will see his appearing. Amen. Verse number five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings on the earth, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. First begotten of the dead. That means of his shedding of his blood. When he shed his precious blood for you and I, he became the first begotten of the dead. Okay. He said here, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins. I don't know about you, friends. But I am so glad that Jesus Christ did what he did on Calvary. Amen. 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 And let me say it like this. Uh, you may be book smart. You may have wisdom and have understanding of some of the things. But let me say it like this. If you do not have Christ Jesus, if you have not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, friends, you will not pertain to any part of this word of right. God. Amen. You will not be in it. Even though you do have understanding, you see, you must have the blood applied to your heart. Amen. Amen. You must be saved is what the word of God says. Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. In other words, he freed you and I, did he not? Let's look over at Hebrews chapter 2 and 14. Hebrews 2 and 14. <clears throat> For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Okay? So we see that Christ is the 
uh, <clears throat> the first partaker. He, in other words, uh, first begotten of the dead. Okay. Verse number six. And had made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now these kings are your ethnotes. Okay. These are those <clears throat> that are overcomers. And the elect are your priests in this, that to come, in the millennial, okay? As we see that when the millennial do, does come, when Christ Jesus does come, he will take the elect and allow the, the, uh, the elect to be the priests, you see, the, the Zadok, as would say, okay? To do the teaching and do the correcting at that time, all right? We'll get a lot more into that later on in the book. It'll come to a whole lot more, and you'll come to realize a whole lot more of that, okay? Uh, verse number seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kinders of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. Now, he said here in verse seven, behold, he cometh with clouds. Jesus Christ is not going to come on a puffy little cloud. That's not what he's saying. He's not going to come riding in on a cloud like some kind of magic carpet. Jesus Christ is coming with a mass group of people is what the word of God is trying to teach you. Amen. So this is where the rapturists get their clouds uh, and where they think that they're going to be taken away and be called away into a cloud. Let me iterate something for you right off the bat. We aren't going anywhere. Right. Okay? Amen. We aren't going anywhere. If you have a view of uh, maybe leaving this world and going somewhere, and, uh, uh, friend, it's not going to be that way. We will always be here. We have always been here. And we will continue to be here. Amen? Amen. We were created in that to inhabit this earth. We were here in the first earth age. We are here now in this dispensation. And when heaven and earth come together and there is a new heaven coming down, amen, amen. new Jerusalem, amen. we'll see that it'll be right here uh, on this earth. Amen. And you want to be a part of that, amen? Yes. You want to be a partaker in that part, amen? amen. You definitely amen. do. Amen. All right. He said, uh, uh, Behold, he cometh in clouds. We went over that. Every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Who are they? They are the Kenites. They are the priests that uh, took Christ into the prison and imprisoned him. They are the Kenites. They are the, uh, the Pharisees that took hold of Jesus. They also will see. You say, well, Brother Randall, they're already gone. They're already dead. I'm talking about their descendants. They still are here on this earth. <laughs> the Kenites are very much around, okay? And all the kinders of the earth shall wail because of him. Now, <clears throat> you can take this in two different ways. There'll be a wail of sorrow. Why is that? Well, there'll be a well of sorrow for the evil, and there will be a well of sorrow for the deceived. Who are the deceived? More than likely, it'll be the Christian nations that will be deceived because they'll be looking for a, a flyaway doctrine. When the Antichrist comes, uh, he's going to be preaching a message, uh, I've come to rapture you away. I've come to call you away and take you home with me, you see. But we, as the elect of God, this wailing will be a wailing of joy. Amen? It will be a wailing of joy. Why is that? Because our Savior has finally come, and that to redeem that to himself, which belongs to him. Amen? Amen. He come to get his own. <laughs> I'm one of his. 
Right. He's coming after me. Amen. 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 I hope he's coming after you. Amen. I hope that you have your heart sealed and your mind sealed about the word of God to come to the knowledge of the truth and be prepared for that day. All right. Verse number eight. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. You cannot prepare in that late hour. Do you understand that? You cannot prepare yourself in a late hour. Preparation starts right now. If you have a desire and you don't understand the, uh, the book of the Revelation, you don't understand how Jesus will come or when Jesus will come. Oh, well, Brother Randall, nobody knows when he's coming. Oh, friends, we do know. How do we know? We know by the events that will take place, that will take place before our eyes, and we will be able to see the time as it comes. As we get on further into the word of God, we're going to document that. The understanding of this revelation of Jesus Christ must occur before the sounding of the fifth trump. If you are not sealed in your mind by the sounding of the fifth trump, it may not be pretty. It may not be pretty for you, okay? So we need to realize that uh, there needs to be something done. We need to open up our hearts and our minds as Christian nations and come to the realization that uh, there's going to be one trying to deceive us. There's going to be one coming that's going to try his best and that to deceive you and I. That's what he's coming to do. The first one on the scene is always a liar. Always remember that. Jesus said, if they say I'm in the temple, go not there. If they say, I'm in the desert, go not there. Why is that? Because he's not the real Jesus. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. So we will endure till the end. We know that Christ comes at which trump? At the last trump class. Amen. Amen. At the, la the furthest trump out. So what do we do? How do we know that we get a hold of the right one? We wait upon him. Amen. We wait. We tarry until he comes, is what the word of God says. We have to tarry until he comes. That's the trick of it all. Don't be fooled uh, by the uh, woos of the Antichrist. Don't be fooled by his message and his uh, prosperity and his peace. You see, he's going to come in very prosperously. He's going to come in very peacefully. He's going to come in in a way that everyone's going to think he is Jesus himself. Yep. Why is that? Because he's going to be sitting on the throne of God, calling himself God. But we are going to have more wisdom than that. We're going to be prepared, okay? <clears throat> Verse number nine. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, which in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He is a, a partaker. He is a companion and partaker of the kingdom of God, you see. He also will be there, friends. Not a if, but when we right. make it into right. the kingdom of God, right. you will see. John, amen. amen, you will be there with these great prophets, with these great disciples, with these great apostles, okay? We will all be there together. Verse number 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, friends, listen to me, sharpen up. This was not on a Sunday. This was not on a Saturday. This wasn't a day of worship. This is the day of the Lord. What day of the Lord? The day when Jesus Christ comes. Amen? Amen. When he appears uh, on this earth. How do we know that? All right, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 2 and 3. 
2 Thessalonians 2, 2 and 3. He said, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What day? The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. Okay? Amen. All right. Verse number 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Yes. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now, which of the seven churches represent your church is the question tonight. Which of the seven churches represent what is being taught where you belong. What Jesus thinks of these seven churches will come out here in just a moment. <clears throat> Every verse you read in the Revelation from this verse to the end of the chapter 22 will be viewed from the Lord's day. Everything you read from this verse right here until the end of chapter 22 will be of the Lord's day. We will be viewed from the Lord's day. You must understand that, or it will not make sense to you. If you don't understand that, if you don't understand that we are in the Lord's day, what day? When he comes. Amen. Okay? Amen. So what did John do? He looked ahead of time, did he not? He took his vision, and the revelation was of the day of the Lord. So from this point on, we will be referring to that very day. And what will this do? This will give preparation for you and I. We will prepare ourselves and educate ourselves and that to be prepared for that day, okay? All right. <clears throat> Verse number 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. These are symbolic mm -hmm. of seven churches. Mm -hmm. Okay? We'll confirm that as we get on down here in the chapter. 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Now, what we have here, again, is that circle. It's a geographic circle of these churches. And how that was that they were all placed right perfectly in a circle. Isn't that something? And then not only that, but Jesus Christ is in the midst of all seven churches, is what he's trying to say. Now, he's not standing there, okay? He is in the midst of these churches. And so we said that, we are symbolic of all these churches. Now, we are going to do our best to line up with the one uh, uh, that Jesus Christ likes the best. That's pretty easily understood, isn't it? Uh, we want to be on the correct side, uh, not the one that he hates the most, okay? So I want you to be uh, uh, wise about that and understand that. <clears throat> Verse number 14. His head and his hair was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, if you'll turn with me to Daniel, chapter number 7. We want to confirm this right here. Chapter 7 and verse number 9. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. 
His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. This is our Jesus, our Savior. Okay? In other words, he's the same as in this in this chapter right here. This is your confirmation, okay? Uh -huh. All right, verse number 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. That's many peoples, okay? Uh -huh. Many waters is many peoples. Uh -huh. So his voice sounded as if it were many people uh -huh. speaking at one time. 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. John's doing his best in that to give you an illustration of what's going on. He's giving his best view at what he's seen, okay? What we have here in, in verse 16 he had in his right hand seven stars. Now, these are the angels that have been assigned to every church, to every church in Asia, okay? Each church has an angel, all right? Remember that part. <clears throat> and this two-edged sword, I'm going to go over here to Matthew's gospel, chapter number 10, and verse number 34. Just to confirm what we're doing. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. Okay? Jesus come, and that to make a division. A right division, for a reason. He come to divide the world. Divide what? Well, we can put it like this. Divide the goats from the sheep, okay? We can put it that way. He will make a division. And that's what this life is all about. That's what this dispensation is all about. That's why you are in the flesh. Christ will check you and me and every individual has ever been born to see exactly how you lived your life and to give honor unto him. That is the reason why you are on this earth. That's why you are in the flesh to give an account of this time, of what you will do with this time. And it's wise of you to be in the house of the Lord. It's Amen. wise of you to be studying the book of the Revelation. Amen. Amen. And don't ever let it be said that God don't see it. Amen. Amen. God sees it right now, Amen. this very hour that we are standing here. Father sees that you have a determination in that to learn the word of God. That's and right. it's very, very important. Amen. It's very important. This isn't just a game, guys. That's right. This isn't just a popularity Amen, contest. Brother. This is very, very important, very detrimental to your soul. Amen. To where you will be destined to. You understand? Okay. So it's very important. Verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Mm -hmm. In other words, John was with Christ again. Did you see that? John was with Christ again. You see, this is the same John that was the disciple of Jesus Christ. And at that very moment, he was with Christ again. What a blessing that was for John to be able to be in that part at that very moment. Amen. What a blessed time. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know what uh, uh, I would think if this revelation were to have fallen on me, Brother Bob. I don't know how I would have handled it. I, I, it would have been a very large load. It would have been a very large responsibility to be able to take on and to see futuristic of all these things that are coming to pass. Amen. But John is doing his best in that to reveal to you and I Amen. what he is seeing. Amen. Okay? Amen. All right. Verse number 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. 
And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 And have the keys of hell and of death. Amen. Jesus is very much alive. Yes, sir. He's not dead. This book is very much alive. Amen. It's not dead. Amen. Uh, like a lot of people would have you to believe that uh, the word of God is so outdated. Yes, and, and it doesn't mean anything. Nothing's going to come to pass. Friend, don't listen to those lies. Amen. Don't listen to people that want to try to take you and, and drag you away from the book of the Revelation. Amen, brother. It's a blessing. What I read to you yeah. in verse number three, That's blessed right. is he that readeth and they that hear the prophecy of this Amen. book. Amen. It's important that we realize that Jesus done this for our behalf. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He done it for our behalf. Why is that? Because he loved you. How much did he love you? He loved you this much, friends. He loved you enough to stretch his arms out Amen. and to be nailed to an old rugged cross. Amen. I mean to tell you, he wasn't just standing there on a stoop. That's right. Friends, they nailed that man. Amen. They took big spikes and nailed him to a cross. Amen, brother. And his precious blood fell upon the ground yes. Amen. for you and I, for That's our right, sins. Brother. Amen. This book is alive. Yes, sir. Jesus said, Lo, I come to you in the volume of the book. Amen. So therefore we see that Christ is doing his best to wake us up. Amen. To open our eyes and let us see what's going to happen in the future. Okay? Amen. All right. He said, and have the keys of hell and death. Boy, I'm glad of that, aren't Amen. you? I'm glad of that. Amen. What's that mean to you, Brother Randall? Uh, that means to me that he's going to be able to put Satan exactly where he belongs. Yes, Amen. Sir. Amen. He has that key. And he's going to do his best that none of his children perish. Amen. None of them. Amen. What did he say? He said, uh, he would leave the ninety and nine, yeah. and that to go all through. Friends, he's the good shepherd. Amen. He loves you Amen. and cares about you. Amen. He cares enough that he would write and pin this down for you, yes, sir, so that we wouldn't be damned and believe a lie. That's right. What the word says. That's right. Okay. Verse nineteen. Let me back up. Eighteen. He said, "The keys of the hell of death, uh, of hell and of death." mean you have the authority and control of what to do with these keys. What is on the other side of this physical life is eternally up to you and how you control it. That's right. To escape out of hell and the second death. That's right. That is the important part, that we realize that we have that key. We have that opportunity. And we have that right and that ability to keep ourselves. But also remember, friends, if somehow you slip up and make that wrong choice, on, it will be done by you and right. nobody else. Right. Okay, So it's very important. Now, let me say it like this. I'm not trying to scare nobody into this thing. I don't want to scare somebody. This, this prophecy that we're reading should not be scary. That's right. Okay? This should be a blessing for you. Amen. Amen. Why is that? Because you are the elect of God. Mm -hmm. You are chosen by God. And that to be in this Bible study yeah. and to hear the word of God. Amen. Some of you have foreknowledge of it already, Amen. you see. Some of you are really just catching up right now. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You see, God don't look on those kind of things. God don't grade you uh, uh, by that at all. Amen. What he's going to grade you at at that final hour, amen? How you stand at that last hour, okay? Yeah, amen. So you and I need to realize that we have this opportunity right now, the grandest opportunity That's right. mankind has ever seen. Amen, brother. Right now. We've all got loved ones. We've all got friends that are in churches today that are hearing uh, the rapture theory. We've all got loved ones that will not listen to you and I. You see, why is that? Because the word of God tells us. Jesus said that sons will be against fathers. Amen. Amen. And daughter-in-laws will be against mother-in-laws. Why is that? Because of that division that Jesus came to bring. Yeah. He said, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Yeah. Division, you see, yeah. through his word. Yeah. So we realize that uh, we have this opportunity to make... Uh, write our destiny, okay? Mm -hmm. Verse 19. 
Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Pretty straightforward right there. What he's telling John. Verse number 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The candlestick holds a candle giving off light. Okay? The right hand is the hand of power and might. And it shows where the work is done. So what we see here, that each one of these churches have a candlestick. And they are to give out a light. Some of them are flickering. Yeah. Some of them are just about out. But some shine like new money. Amen. Amen. All right. We want to make sure we line up with the correct one, okay? Amen. Now that's chapter number one. We're going to go on over into chapter number two. Time uh, allowing us, we're going to try our best to get through chapter two. If not, we'll pick it up the next week. Chapter two and verse number one. He said, <clears throat> Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saith he that hold the seven stars in his right hand. Who is that? Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now who's that? That's also Jesus. Okay. That's the same one. He said, verse number two, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. They say that they are apostles. They say that they know all the, the word of God. They say that they have uh, worked and walked along with God. But they're liars. Just like those who send down the quarterly... <laughs> Or the, uh, uh, the Bible school lesson. These are they of the same. These are the Kenites, you see. These are they that will try their best to control what you believe. And what you teach and what you study. You say, well, Brother Randall, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that. How many of you here ever taught Sunday school before? Amen. How many of you here ever went to Bible school? All right. When you go into some Sunday schools, they have what's called a quarterly. Yes, sir. When you get into Bible school, uh, 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 there when the little kids, they send you a pamphlet, you see. And they give you this illustrated idea of how it's supposed to be taught and how to get, and people will just follow right along with it. Yeah. Little do they realize that they're teaching right from the reins of the Antichrist. Amen. Amen. Right from the reins of the Kenites. Amen. Okay. We need to realize that. That's why we are to study the Word of God and be sharp and be prepared at all times, okay? Amen. Amen. He said here, he said, And thou hast tried them which say they are the apostles. Now, we should do the same. Let me say it like this. If somebody comes to you and wants to try to teach you the Word of God, what are you to do? You are to try them. Amen. Amen. Test them. See what they know. Ask them questions. What kind of questions should I ask them, Brother Randall? Well, ask them exactly the question that they need to be asked. Do you know when the true Christ comes? <laughs> That'll get them every time. Yep. If they don't have the correct answer, what is the answer, class? He comes at the last trump. Will he come midway and take us away and pluck us out no. and go up there and come back down? No. 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 The word of God does not tell us anything like that. No. It tells us that we are to wait upon the Lord yes. until the end, until the last trump. Yes. So we are to try them just like that. We are to be of this condition right here now. Amen. Okay? Amen. <clears throat> Verse 3. And has borne and has patience for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. 
Sounds pretty good, don't it? Yeah. Sounds like they're doing all right. Yeah. So far. Verse number four. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee yeah. because thou hast left thy first love. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. What does this mean, Brother Randall? What's it mean that he's left his first love? Who is your first love? The Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Now, it's a little hard for you to understand that right off the bat. You say, well, this is a church that has a candlestick, that has an angel, and Christ is directing that angel and directing this church. So how could they have forgotten their first love? In other words, it's how they teach the word of God yeah. is what their first love is. You understand that? You write that in your Bibles. That first love is how they teach the word of God. If they do not teach God's word, line upon line and precept upon precept, they are lining up with this church of Ephesus. They are beginning to line up here. Now, as we go through these churches tonight on this second chapter, I believe some pictures of churches may pop in your mind. Some places that you may have visited or been a part of in the past may pop in your mind because it sounds pretty much like the world today that we live in. Verse number five, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do thy first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Remember therefore. Remember that worldly matters are not the word of God. Worldly matters are not God's word. We are not to study upon philosophy. That's right. We are not to study upon ideas. But we are to study upon God's word. There are many churches that don't study the Old Testament. They leave their members in total ignorance and open for deception. That are coming upon us more every day. Get back to your first love, the true entire word of God. If you will do that, God will be pleased. He will be pleased. You say, Brother Randall, what if, uh, what if I don't have time? Well, we've got time right now. Let me give you an instance of those who decided not to. Who decided just to go to sleep and allow it just to happen however it wants to happen. I've heard tell of many of people say, well, I don't know. Uh, I, I think that the rapture may happen, and it don't matter if it, uh, if it does or if it doesn't. Well, I disagree. It very much does matter. It very much does matter how you study the Word of God and what you believe, because it will be accounted to you and sealed in your forehead and preparing you for that latter day. Amen. If you do not have the knowledge and the wisdom of the Word of God, how this thing will work out, Friends, it will not be sealed in your forehead. Therefore, you will be deceived by the Antichrist. You will go whoring into his camp. You will. Amen. I'm not saying you might. You will. For the whole world, what the Bible says. Amen. The whole world does what? Goes whoring after him. Okay? Let's move on. Verse number six. But this thou, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, <clears throat> I've done some studies on the Nicolaitans. There's not a whole lot of history about them, but they are a type that are appearing in churches today. Okay? They are hateful and disruptive people towards God. They claim to be the chosen people of God but of, are of their father, Cain. They are of the devil. They say that they are of God. They try to come with you through philosophy, through all sorts of uh, man's ideas, but they never understand the word of God. You see, the Bible teaches us that Jesus said, it has been hidden from the wise and the prudent, but he has delivered it 
and the babes. Amen? Amen. That's you and I, friends. Mm -hmm. He has given us the liberty to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay? Let me go over there. <clears throat> We're still in six. Let's go over there to Jeremiah 35. Jeremiah 35. I'm going to read a little bit to you here real quick. In verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jerichim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go into the house of Rechabites, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jehazanath, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazanath. Now, this is not the same Jeremiah of the book that we are reading, okay? This is a different Jeremiah. And his brother and all his sons and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber, and the sons of Hanan, the sons of Igdali, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Masseah, the son of Shalim the keeper of the door. Verse 5, And I set before the sons of the house of Rechabites pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, Drink ye wine. Now, this wine that they are to drink is symbolic unto the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, you're going to see something here. Verse 6, But they said, We will not drink wine. For Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall not drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Verse 7, Neither shall ye build houses, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land wherein ye be strangers. Who does that sound like? We just come out of the book of the Genesis. Who does that sound like? You can read right over there in chapter 4 in the book of Genesis, and I'll tell you. Chapter 4 in the book of Genesis. In verse number 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive, a vagabond, shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. These are the descendants of Cain. These are the descendants of Cain, which are of the seed line of Satan, which are the same here in the book of Jeremiah, which would not partake of the blood which are the same over here in the book of the Revelation, which are the Nicolaitans, okay? And these are the same that are in your churches today. They are in your churches trying to disrupt and corrupt and to break down the word of God. When you try your best to stand and teach God's word, you have a disruptance, you understand. Why is that? Because people don't want to hear it. That's right. It goes against all they ever heard. It goes against their traditions of man. Yeah. It goes against their belief. And they think you're teaching doctrines of devil. Yeah. When you are truly teaching the word of God. Amen. That's when Matthew chapter 5 comes in. Amen? Amen. The Beatitudes. He said, blessed are they that are persecuted wrongfully for my name's sake. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why we stand upon the word of God. Amen. That's why we don't care. I don't care. Who is our lips? Amen? Amen. I'm going to teach the word of God. Amen. You want to shut me up? You're going to have to kill me. Amen? Amen. I'm going to teach it until I go. Amen? I'm going to teach the word of God the best that I possibly can. As long as my mind is sharp, I'm going to do my best in that to teach God's word. Line upon line and precept upon precept. That's what I've been called to do. Amen. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Amen. I've got to do it. It's imputed in me. Hopefully that you can get that same spirit that God will put upon you and that to be a witness for him. Amen. Okay? We need to recognize these people, okay? Amen. We need to recognize them for what they are. I hope that helped you on the Nicolaitans, okay? Amen. Verse number seven. 
He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Mm -hmm. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise of God. So what's he saying here in verse number 7? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that has an ear yeah. of wisdom, yeah. let him hear what I just said and brought out in this Bible study hour. That you may realize that there are people out here trying to tear down churches every day. Trying to tear down the Word of God. Trying to keep it under half where it can't be taught in the right way. Amen. He said, to him that overcometh, Will I give to eat of the tree of life? So what's he saying here? He's saying that in this church of Ephesus, there will be some. In this church today that is teaching like this, not this church, but the churches that are teaching of this matter, if you overcome and you get out of that church, he said, I will give you uh, the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. That's your promise. If you will listen to the word of God and you will come out from amongst that people, you've got to make that separation yourself. Amen. Oh, but I've been in fellowship with these people all my life, Brother Randall. It's so hard for me to just to break fellowship. Well, you can do it in a loving way. I, I know what I've done. I got my family by the arm and I got up and got out of there, Brother Bob. When I come to the realization they wouldn't let me teach God's word like it need to be taught, God said, that's enough, son. Amen. You've extended your hand long enough. Ain't it about to fall off? Amen. Ain't your arm about getting heavy? Amen. You've extended your hand long enough. It's time for you to move on. Amen. And God will open the door for you. If you will step out in faith and do God's will and prepare your family and yourself for the coming of the Lord, God will open the door for you. Yes. He said he'll open a door that no man can shut. Amen. And he will shut behind you doors that no man will ever open again. Amen. It's up to you to decide. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse number eight. And under the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich. And I know the blaspheme of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Smyrna was poor in earthly standards, but rich in knowledge and understanding. We know who the Kenites are, and they are imposters. <laughs> kind of reminds me of this little church, Brother Mike. Sometimes we just barely do do enough to keep the lights on. Sometimes we just barely do do enough net to keep everything going. But God has got us rich in the word of God. Amen. He's got us prepared for that blessed day. Yes, we don't lack for nothing. That's right. I don't want a big old bank account and that's a flash in front of somebody's eyes. Yep. That's not what we're here to do. Amen. If we are here to do anything, it's here to present the word of God in the fullness thereof. Amen. Amen. He said here, he said, I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty. He said, but thou art rich. Don't think yourself of poor folks. Don't think yourself of having nothing. See, we're just a group of people over here on a Monday night trying that to study the word of God. Just doing our part, amen? amen. We don't have a whole lot. Amen. But God says we are rich. We are rich among mankind today. How many people do you think out there understands this word? Not a lot. Why is that? Because they're not teaching it in their churches. Yeah. They're not passing it on to the flock. They're not giving it to the people and have to be prepared, you see. They want to fill them up with philosophy and ideas of man. Okay? We understand the seed line of Satan. Therefore, we are rich having the key of David. What do you mean by that, Brother Random? We have the key of knowledge and understanding. That key that unlocks the scriptures. That key of wisdom to come to knowledge of the true word of God. And we know that seed line. That's exactly what we have to do. Verse number 10. For none of these things 
which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation. How long, Brother Bob? Ten, Ten days. days. Hey, man, that's all. I, he didn't say 11 days. He didn't say 150 days. He said 10 days is all you will have time. Hey, man, Amen. That is it. That is the last 10 days. Hey, Amen. Mm -hmm. And that you will be tried. And you will have tribulation. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Amen. Now, he's not going to kill nobody. I'm going to bring that out right now. The Antichrist ain't going to kill nobody. Only the people he's going to kill are two. He's going to kill two, which are the witnesses of God. Okay? Remember that. He's not going to kill nobody. How do we know that, Brother Randall? For the Bible tells me that not a hair on our head will be harmed. That we will go through this tribulation and Christ will hold our hands all the way through. Just as the example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. As they went through the fiery furnace, yeah. Christ was in the mist, yeah. right with them all the way through it. Amen. Bible says there wasn't even smoke on their clothing. That's right. Nor was there a higher singe on their head. Amen. Amen. Therefore, tribulation will last 10 days for those who are tried, you see. Yeah. What a blessing that'll be. Amen. And that'll happen at the last trump. As soon as that happens, that's when the last trump comes, okay? So that's your last 10 days upon earth, and that's okay. You ain't got nowhere to go nowhere, amen? You ain't got no, nothing to go back to. You ain't got to worry about nothing. There ain't no amen. concern about going back and, and reestablishing yourself or uh, getting yourself back in line. Friends, we're going to a better place, amen? Right, amen. Going to a better dispensation. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. If you overcome, and you do not go into the camp of the Antichrist, and you wait upon the Lord, the second death will have no effect to you. Amen. What is the second death? The second death is the death of the soul. That is where the soul will die. How many of you have ever seen a flesh body die? We all have. But we've none seen a soul die. One day we will. One day there will be some that will be cast into that lake of fire. And their souls will die at that very moment. You do not. Let me repeat. You do not want to be a part of that. Okay? Amen. Amen. All right. This is what all this preparation is about. That you keep your name in the book. That's the key to it all, guys. That you keep your name in the book. Okay? Verse number 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write these things, saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Now this sharp sword, <laughs> a pruning is going to take place. Amen. And it's called discipline. Yes, sir. It's going to be a pruning. Mm -hmm. Okay? 13, he said, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. 14, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Now, <clears throat> here in verse 14, these here are also conjunction with the Nicolaitans, okay? They have that same identical idea of what they have done, you see. What Christ is saying here, he said that they had, <clears throat> because thou 
has there in them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. In other words, these are like spiritual beggars for money. Balaam was a minister of God. But he done it for what? He done it for money. How many of these have you ever seen out here that show a big show, throw up a big tent and get lots of people to come? They do it for the money, friends. They tell you they're doing it for the lost souls. But you get them over there and you don't cut them a check. You get them over there and get them to preach and get them to stand for revival for several days and you don't cut them a check. You see how mad they get. They ain't doing it for the cause of God. They're doing it for the cause of the Almighty God. Amen. And these are days that line up with Balaam. And who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idol and to commit fornication spiritually. Okay? Now, they weren't doing those awful acts inside the house of God. These are spiritually, they are doing these, okay? And what they're doing, they're taking you away from learning the true word of God. They are seducing you as in how Satan wholly seduced Eve, spiritually seduced her in the same concept, okay? Verse 15, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of a Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. You see that? Okay? So it's the same, you understand. Verse 16. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. If money is more important than God, then you might want to repent. If you're concerned more about the money that comes into the house of God, if you know people that are over uh, the income of the house of God, and their ideas and their uh, understanding is more important about those books of finance than it is the word of God, something's wrong with their heart, friends. You might want to get them out of the position that they're in. I've heard tale of churches that want to see your tax returns. They want to see how much income you have so that they can jot down and do the math for you to let you know how much you are to tithe to that church. Let me say this, that the tithes go to the church. Amen. If your man of God is taking the whole tenth that you give, then there's something wrong. And especially if he's not feeding you the word of God. Right. You're in trouble. He said here in verse 17, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Amen. To him that overcome will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that received it. That hidden manna is the angel food for the spiritual body. That's that spiritual food, friends. He will give it to you if you overcome. If you find yourself in amongst this church, if you are in this church of, that lines up of the way of Pergamos and you get out of it and you depart from it like we said of the other church before, if you separate yourself from that, the Bible goes as far as to say that he will give to you the hidden manna, which is the spiritual food, and will give him a white stone. This white stone is the stone of victory. It's a stone of victory, friends, is what that means. It's a stone that will be given to you because you are an overcomer. And you did not fail. And on that stone, there'll be a new name, which no man knoweth, saving he that received it. What a blessing that's going to be. 
I can't wait, can you? Amen, bro. I can't wait to have that stone. Yes, sir. I can't wait. You know, some have often said, we brought this up before, wonder what's going to be written on that stone. I almost think it might be the name that you used in the first earth age. What God called you in that first earth age. And you will recognize that name. Because it will come to you with total recall. 100% total recall at that very second. You will come to the knowledge of it right then. And your name will be recognized. And he'll be welcoming you in. Come in, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things and I'll make you ruler over me. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, verse number 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto the flame of fire, and his feet like the fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. He's saying that his works are more than love. They don't know the Kenites. Let me tell you something like this right here, friends. You may have all the wisdom. You may have understanding and knowledge. But if you have not love, it won't amount to a thing. Right, bro. If you don't have love for the church, you don't have love for God's people, you don't have love for the man of God, you have nothing. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You can count that up for whatever you want. Amen. You can let it go in one ear and out the other if that's how you want to see it. Yeah. But I want to tell you tonight that it's going to take love. And let me tell you like this. God sees the heart. Amen. He knows exactly what you love Amen. and what you don't love. Amen. You'll never fool God. Right. You'll never fool him. Okay. He said here in verse number 20, Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Okay, we're getting into a different thing now. Now this Jezebel, this is not the Jezebel of the Old Testament. Okay, this is not the Jezebel that uh, tried to kill Elijah. Okay, this is not the same one. Okay, this is not the Jezebel of the Old Testament, but is the one taking hold of most churches today. This Jezebel is a harlot of Revelation chapter 17. Okay, it is the people's churches and system that will whore after this Antichrist. They will whore after her. This Jezebel church calls herself a prophetess, okay, and tries to answer all the spiritual problems as she drags you into whoredoms. In other words, they try to give you uplifting messages, try to feed you full of philosophy, but what they do, they drag you into the whoredoms. They drag you in to the believing of the Antichrist and the preparation of that, you see. The church of Thyatira will teach you all sorts of things that sound good. And just like a whore, she will work you over and your emotions. Have you ever been into an emotional church that does nothing but work you over in your emotions? that tries its best and that to exhort you and try to get you lifted up and standing up and shouting and jumping around. And friend, all that is is a bunch of emotions. Yeah. You got to be aware of these kind of things. He said that this church of Thyatira will teach you all sorts of things that sound good, just like a whore. Yeah, that's how they do it, you see. They'll tell you anything you want to hear. She will seduce you into all forms of heathen customs and religious practices and acts of fornication and idolatry. 
This fits many churches in America and around the world today with their works of love, charity, and service, and patience, and faith, you see. They are totally unprotected against the spiritual war Satan is placing upon them. The true bride of Christ in no way will allow herself to compromise as this church of Thyatira. Amen. The bride of Christ knows her husband. Amen. She knows who she's waiting for. Amen. John chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. Mm -hmm. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Amen. That is a true follower. If you like the ideas of the flashing lights and the loud music, and all sorts of different ideas and different entertainment, and you're calling that church, you very well may be lining up with this church here. You might want to reckon what you're doing. You might want to get back into the word of God. Verse 21, I'm going to try to get this finished. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. She's wrapped up in the fly away doctrine, you see. She's wrapped up in the uh, any moment doctrine. Will not repent of it. You ask your loved ones, you ask your friends, you ask your church members that you used to be around, and you say, won't you come out from amongst that? That's all I've ever heard. That's what I believe. And no, I will not repent of that. Right. It's exactly what their answer will be. Verse 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. The tribulation of the Antichrist is told in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. You can read it for yourself. And you as an individual can be an overcomer, regardless what your family or your local church body does. This great falling away that will happen just prior to our Lord's return is called the great apostasy. Because when the Antichrist arrives, many Christians will believe he is the true Christ yeah. and will follow in ignorance. Yes. And at that moment, they have been seduced Amen. by him. That's right. Woe! Mark 13, 17, he said, Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Right. You've been wholly seduced. When Jesus comes to receive his bride and she's got a baby in her belly, she's been sleeping around. Yes. You don't want to do that, friends. You want to stay pure and clean, ready for the true Christ. Matthew 25, you want to be like them five wise virgins. Amen. And wait until the true Christ comes. Amen. That's why we're here getting oil in our lamps tonight. Amen. 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 All right. 23, and I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. At this time, grace is gone, you see. When he does this, this grace will be gone. No longer grace will abound. There'll be no room for grace. You'll be accounted of your actions, of what you have done and how you have lived your life and how you sit underneath the doctrines of devils. Yeah. 24, but unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. 25, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Amen. What is it that you already have? The knowledge of the word of God. He's talking to you. He's talking to you right there. 
Did you see your name written there in that? He said, which have already, hold fast till I come. Yes. Tarry till I come, he said. 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Not just faith, guys, but the works. Yeah. Did you see that? Not just faith. What's the churches like to tell you today? Oh, is you just have the faith. All you got to have is just the faith. Friends, you must have also the works. Yeah. You must also have works. Faith without works is dead. Yes, sir. Study the word of God. It's what he says to do. 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As a vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. This shepherd, this rule, he'll be a shepherd, you see, when he rules. And he'll rule with a rod, which will be a scepter. And he will break them down just like a pot. They'll break into many pieces. Verse 28, And I will give him the morning star. Oh, it sounds like Jesus is going to give him something. What is this morning star? Let's turn over there to Isaiah 14 real quick. Isaiah chapter number 14. This is what he's going to give unto those who desire. Isaiah 14 and verse number 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which thou didst weaken the nations? This is that morning star he's talking about. This is the same as Satan, Lucifer. Just another name for him, you see. But I thought Jesus was the morning star. Do you see how the deceiver comes? He comes in that to try to be everything that Jesus is. He tries his best to copycat everything that Christ has done. God sent his son into the world that the world through him might be saved. Satan's going to send his son into this world and that's so that the whole world will be deceived. He did. The Kenites. Through everything they do and everywhere they come. He's a copycat. He'll come as Jesus. He'll call himself Jesus. I even believe that he's going to be looking exactly like the pictures that people think Jesus would look like. I believe he's going to be looking just about like what everybody would assume Jesus would look like. He's going to have the whole world in his hands. Verse 29 to come to a close. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I want to say to you tonight, it's been a blessing to be in this first study with you. Amen. I hope and pray that God will open your eyes and open your heart to the true word of God. Tune in again next week at 7 and Monday night. We'll get right back into chapter number 3. Amen. Until then, we ask that the Lord continue to bless you. And you read ahead, amen? You read ahead and study and do all that God would have you to do. Amen. amen.